Today on Cooking with the Lion, I'll be reinventing one of my favorite childhood meals. Plus, I'll be showing you how to prep a fresh bell pepper without making a huge mess with all of those seeds. And it's all happening right now. Let's get started. Growing up, one of my favorite dishes was a sloppy joe. Just saying it makes me want to salivate and make it right away, but I don't want to make the version I grew up with. I don't want that can that has corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, and all the preservatives. So I thought, you know, Nathan, as a chef, let's make an adult version, a healthy version, but a delicious version you can have any time. Let's start right now with some French green or pui lentils. And what I've done is I've rinsed them and I've picked them over for little tiny stones. You can sometimes find them, so take your time looking through. That goes in a small saucepan. I also have three cups of chicken stock. If you don't have chicken stock, you can use vegetable stock, but why use water when you can use flavor? So we have chicken stock, we have lentils, I have one large clove of garlic that I went ahead and smashed with the side of my knife to get the peel off, and you don't have to do any chopping, it's already nice and smashed, that goes in, and one large bay leaf. This is all you need, because there's enough salt in there with the chicken stock. I'm gonna put this over high heat, bring it to a boil, right? Reduce it to a simmer, put a lid on it, and cook it for about 25 minutes. With the lentils cooking, let's get started on the Sloppy Joe base. We're gonna start with really good extra virgin olive oil, like two tablespoons or more. A little more, that looks good. Some onions, this is a medium onion that I've diced nice and small. That goes in. Also have some celery, three stalks of celery that I've cut pretty small as well in addition to a little bit of salt and pepper. Right? Peppers for seasoning and salt will help the tissue break down, so it helps it cook a little bit faster. Now, I have this bell pepper. Bell pepper is important to this dish, but when a lot of people ask me, how do you make it so you dice up the bell pepper, there isn't just seeds everywhere. Well, let me show you how I like to do it. Bell peppers either have three or four lobes. And what I mean by that is when you look at it from the top or bottom, you can see this one has one, two, three, four lobes. Same at the bottom, one, two, three, four lobes. If it had three, that's fine because we're gonna approach it the exact same way. What I want you to do is take your chef's knife and cut from this point to that point, which is one side to the left side of the same lobe, sort of a nice curve around the circumference of where the seeds are going to be, ending up in this left and right point of this lobe, okay? So let me show you how this is done. I'll start with the first one, just like that, left and right side of this one lobe, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it around and end up at the very bottom. Now the wonderful thing is, all the seeds are still attached to where these little gills are, right? and then there are no seeds in there. So I can put this to the side, and I'll do this next one. This knife goes on the left and right side. I'm gonna go around the circumference, a nice wide burp, give it lots of room, no seeds, all the seeds are still attached. All right, now the last two. And this last one. And then you can hang that on your Christmas tree. Really, there's nothing there. There's barely even a chef's snack left on that. But the good news is all the seeds are still here. My cutting board is still clean, and we simply set them aside. And I'm gonna dice this red bell pepper the same size as the onion and the celery, which is a small dice. Now that everything is a small dice, I'm gonna put this over medium heat, stirring occasionally until the onions maybe start to caramelize, but they will definitely be translucent. And then we move on to the next step of this delicious sloppy joe base. That looks really good. It's been about 10 minutes of stirring occasionally, and the vegetables are cooked through. That's what we want, because after we add the rest of the ingredients, it's pretty much service time, okay? I wanna add one more tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. And the reason for that is because in come ingredients that need to be cooked in a little bit more fat. We have tomato paste that goes in. 
We also have uh, cloves of garlic that I chopped up pretty fine, minced, and also some chili powder. That goes in as well. I'm going to stir this up and cook it for about one minute until that raw flavor of the tomato paste goes away. It's amazing how you can really smell the garlic and that chili powder. We want to add a few more ingredients to give it that sloppy joe sloppiness. We're going to start with some ketchup. I like to use ketchup that doesn't have any sugar in it. Uh, a little bit of ketchup and also some Dijon mustard. That goes in. Also have some uh, dark brown sugar along with some cider vinegar and Worcestershire sauce. And that gives it a wonderful complexity. Next is a small can or a 14.5 ounce can of fire roasted tomatoes. They just have so much more flavor than just the regular diced tomatoes. That goes in. In addition to a little bit of water, a quarter cup of water. And that quarter cup will make it so that it can actually cook down. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit too dry. And of course, those lentils that we cooked down and drained nicely, they go in so that all of that flavor can cook together. It only takes about five minutes and then it's time to serve. Does this look like the grin of a six-year-old that's so happy that one of their favorite dishes is being served? Because I feel that way. But unlike my childhood self, this is a healthier version, but it has the same textures and the same flavors going on. Grab yourself a nice soft bun, right? And I'll spoon some of this right on top. I remember as a kid, my brothers and I would put so much of the filling in there that we would actually have to eat it with a fork because it was just so darn sloppy. So I'm gonna go adult, adult version on that. That still looks, I mean, come on, it still looks pretty sloppy, but it also looks absolutely fantastic. And we just tuck on in. What do you think? <laughs> this is gonna get a little bit messy. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> I mean, it's so fun. Here we go. Just an absolute mess. And that's kind of what we're striving for, right? This is so close to the real thing that it makes me just giddy because the thing about French green puy lentils is when they're cooked through seasoned beautifully like these are, they don't get really mushy like other lentils do. And it's very reminiscent about the sort of spongy texture that cooked ground beef has. And as far as the spice goes, we just have one, but it has so many different things in it, which is chili powder. I'm getting a little bit of cumin and that just goes boom, right to my childhood sloppy joe. It's in there. Then we have like the, the triple punch of the different types of tomatoes. We have uh, tomato paste, we have ketchup, and we also have the fire roasted tomatoes. That brings so much to this childhood memory and making it come true. We also have acidity, which is the, the, the cider vinegar, which really pops it up. It makes it so much more lively. And we also have some sweetness. You have to have sweetness, not with corn syrup, not with high fructose corn syrup, just those two tablespoons of dark brown sugar, which brings like a little bit of like sloppy joe molasses to this dish. I am so happy with this. I'm so happy that I can have a childhood favorite any time I want. And you know what? So can you. So I can't wait for you to try this and let me know what you think. Cheers.